Okay, well, I'm just going to start with roll call attendant. Okay. Uh, Denise Barstow Mans. Present. Courtney Meyer. Courtney Meyer. Present. Present. Gary Parson. Gary Parson. Here. Sherry, I don't know why, but there's an echo, with, a your echo with your sound. Uh, there's, my computer has not been liking Zoom or Teams lately. Is it still echoing? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Yes. Yeah. It is still echoing. Yeah. Maybe I should come out and can try yeah. to come back in again and see what happens. Okay. Okay. All right. Alan, can you hear us now? Oh, Alan is logging in on something. Okay, I'm back in, but I'm in twice. Hmm. That's why you're getting the echo. You weren't before, though. But now we're not echoing, so that's a plus. Okay. <laughs> Maybe not. Oh. Is it still echoing? I don't think so. Okay. Nope, I didn't hear it that time. Okay, good. All right. Um, so approval of the minutes from our January meetings, January 17th and January 26th, I believe those were distributed right after the meetings. Did anybody have any corrections or additions they'd like to make? No. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. What's the deal? I don't vote on the the meetings I wasn't at or something? Probably not. Yes. You abstained because you were absent. Okay. All right. Minutes passed. Thank you, everybody. All right. Alan, how's your sound now? Okay. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. And I'm, on my, I'm on my phone. Okay. You're up to tell us about your um, sampler project for the Historical Society. Am I first? Yes. Okay. Great. Uh, okay, so the Historical Society, which I'm a member, <clears throat> has in its collection uh, 10 needlepoint samplers. Uh, does everybody know what a sampler is? They're yes. Much? Okay. So these date from 1795 to about 1850. They were all done by either Hadley girls or girls who were related to Hadley families. Uh, and uh, they're quite lovely, most of them. Uh, three of them are framed. Seven of them have been sitting in a drawer folded up for about, I don't know, at least 50 years. And we recently uh, rediscovered them. We had them uh, looked at by a conservator who told, gave us a price to restore and properly mount them and uh, fix them up so that they're uh, in good shape for preservation and, and display. So we went to the CPA um, uh, earlier and uh, got their uh, blessing for the amount of money that we're asking uh, the town to approve from CPA funds. It's $18,000 to do 10 of the samplers. And we're hoping that you guys would uh, uh, also um, support that uh, project. I think it sounds incredibly worthwhile. You're also planning a program around them, correct? Oh, right. Yeah, thank you for reminding me. On April 23rd, um, at the public library, such as a Sunday from 2 to 4, we're having Lynn Anderson, who's the director of the National Sampler Project, uh, which is a pretty big deal. They collect uh, and, and, just, and digitize samplers from around the country. She, she's been out. She's a friend of Marla Miller. So she's been out and she's taken a look at the samplers. She was quite excited by them. And she agreed to give a talk on the samplers, the act, the technique, you know, the role they played in uh, education of uh, young women back in the 18th and 19th centuries, and to talk about the, the, the Hadley samplers in particular. And we will have them all on display. And uh, the program also invites anybody who has a sampler 
uh, who would like uh, Lynn to look at it um, uh, and, uh, you know, provide some information about it, uh, they could bring that to the program. So that should be pretty, pretty interest, interesting. It'll be a live program, not Zoom. Mm -hmm. What time did you just say that was, Alan? Two to four. Two to four. Okay. But do, I don't know if it, I, we did send out um, uh, the the um, the pro the project. I mean the the program poster. Um, and uh, but I'm not sure if I mean, emailed it to the members of the historic society. Did anybody get it by email? If, I think. No? I if, I'll, I'll just I'll send it around to everybody by email. And you'll have a copy of it. Right. I definitely and, saw it somewhere. I don't know if it was on Facebook. I, I know I saw it somewhere too. Yeah. Yeah, it's on Facebook and it's uh, at the library. Well, we're put, in fact to, uh, tomorrow, Denise, I'll be coming up to Barstow to put it on your bulletin board. That's great. So, <clears throat> so if anyway, if we. If we can say at, at the town meeting that uh, when we were asking for approval that um, that the project does have your approval, I think that would go a long way to ensuring that we get the money. Uh, I'm totally fine with that. Do we want to put yep. it to a vote? Yep. Uh, I move that we let the CPA committee know that we are in favor of these funds being used to Preserve the samplers. For the historical society. For the historical society, yes. Great. I appreciate it. Thank you. I second that. And uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Alan, can I ask you a question? This is unanimously before Sherry asks Wait, Thank question. you. Sure. <laughs> yep. Do you, have you identified the names of the people who sell the samplers? Yep. Yeah, we know, all, we know all of them. Well, so, most of them have their names on them. That's what. Yeah, that's what's so, they usually do. They have to do that's what's so now, cool you, about them. Yeah. yeah. Now, have and, and, have and you done research them. about that? Yeah, we've, we've done all the research uh, as much as we can. And uh, what's interesting is uh, most of the women who did these samples were related to each other. Most of not all of them, but most of them. Or there was some connection. And uh, this is a whole story about how we got them. Um, and... Uh, uh, and if you look at the sampler in the, on the poster, it, it, it has a particularly interesting story. It was done by uh, Sophia uh, Cook, Dorothy Sophia Cook. And um, it says on the sampler, wrought by Dorothy Sophia Cook, 1827, Hadley. So a lot of times the samplers will tell you who made it and where and when. Uh, not all of them, but uh, and that's pretty pretty cool. And then you find out who these women were, um, and uh, it's a particularly particularly sad story for the Dorothy Cook one. That this is not the time to do that, but we'll do it at the program. And uh, or if anybody wants to know, I'll come to the historical society because that <laughs> that is the one thing that we have on display. So, that answer your question. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Appreciate it, and uh, hopefully your your projects. You have one coming up at the town meeting as well, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, how much is that going to be for? We asked for fifteen thousand. Oh, you're <laughs> is that for the signs? Yep, signs, oh. uh, the West Street walking tour, and the driving great. tours. But the bulk of it is for the signs. Yeah, great. Okay, well, I'm sure you'll get approved. Uh, the planning board approved the signage. They did. We have to go through the select board next, so they're our next hurdle. Yeah, I don't think we'll be having any problem with you. You know, if you want, if you need the historical society's blessing, I'm sure you can have it. Thank you. I mean, you'll have mine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Okay, I, I have to sign off, but um, Diana, I have to talk to you after the meeting. I'll send you an email about the Russell okay. School information that you're looking for from uh, okay. Al Alex Lamarch. Is contacted me Perfect. doing some kind of a a video or something or, mm -hmm. yep. yeah all right and i've been trying to dig out the information for him but i need some more information from you okay. as to what you're looking for i'll contact you later perfect okay and good and courtney <laughs> god bless you for your work on russell school <laughs> <laughs> thank you okay we'll talk about it later okay right. thanks alan <laughs>
thanks. Thank you so, so much, folks, for all you do. Thank you. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, next up for us on our agenda is about the CPA application for the signs walking tour and driving tour. So as you know, the CPA did approve our application. Uh, everyone voted in favor except Edwin Matusko did abstain from the vote. He didn't say why, uh, maybe because he's just a real stickler for the rules. I'm not entirely sure. Um, Mary did share that Stuart at the state level did have some concerns about it not fully fulfilling the historic preservation aspect of CPA laws, but um, Mark Dunn from the planning board was in support saying that this was basically providing us with the funds that the town should originally provide us with. And Andy Morris Friedman said, it looks like other communities did very similar projects and that we it wouldn't be an issue, he thought, for us to support this. So that was great to hear. Um, our next hurdle, like I just said to Alan, is that we are on the agenda for the April 5th Board of Trust, uh, excuse me, Select Board meeting. Sorry, I have work on the mind. Um, and so I will be attending by Zoom. If anybody can attend in person, that will be excellent. Um, I can do most of the speaking, that's my plan. Um, I'm gonna put together some talking points uh, that I can share, probably just take what I had prepared for the planning board and be ready to share that. Um, I think we might get some pushback on the design since it is outside the bylaws and we might get pushback on putting them in floodplains that's also outside the bylaws. So we'll just have to be ready to counteract those thoughts and hopefully, um, I mean, we do have plan B, it would mean we wouldn't have, we'd lose the Spanish side, but I mean, it is a possibility to do it, the, what they call a national park sign, which is um, more flat and at an angle. Um, in terms of the floodplain, I'm not entirely sure because I'm pretty confident the entirety of Hockenham is considered a floodplain, but um, cross that bridge when we get to it. So the problem with the design is um, that it's upright and it needs to be at it's an angle? too tall. Okay. So um, the sign bylaws say that they can't be taller than I think it's four feet off the ground. Okay. And okay. right now we are six feet off the ground. Okay. And because the sign is two feet tall in itself, if we fulfilled the four feet off the ground, it would just be at a really awkward height that really no one would be able to read comfortably. So that way, like if we had it four feet off the ground and then was that angled sign, it would be easier to read, but it doesn't weather as well. And right. like I said, we would lose the other side. So um, that's a backup plan. If we have to do it, we'll do it because that's what they say, but um, I'm hoping we can just scoot right in there with our original idea because um, we are also part of the town and we're not a private entity trying to push an agenda here. We're just trying to share information and fulfill our duty as the historical commission, which is to preserve history and share the history with the public. Um, then we have town meeting on May 4th. I'm wondering if we want to have an extra historical commission meeting on either April 18th or 25th to make sure we are prepared for town meeting and make sure we um, have some talking points together that we can share. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I'm free both fine. Fine. Yeah. Okay, my preference is the 18th, but I can be swayed either way. Denise, do you have an opinion? I'm sorry, we're looking at meeting on April 18th, so we're prepared for the town that, meeting. Town meeting, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I never changed it on my calendar that we are every other, so it's already on my calendar. Perfect, all right. April 18th it is then, thank you. Um, another aspect of this project is to get the signs approved by the building commissioner. Um, I understood that we would have to first get them approved by the select board and then go to building commissioner. So I reached out to the building commissioner to uh, learn if that is in fact the process and I have not heard back. So I emailed them again today as a nudge so they can hopefully explain that process better. Basically I understand is that we have to apply for a permit to put them up. So I think that'll be closer to the end of the project when we're ready to 
install them. Of course, we don't want to fabricate them and then not be able to install them. So I think we that could even be pushed until after town meeting because we want to make sure we've got the funding in place for pushing any further, I think. So I don't have any other notes on this process right now. Does anybody have any questions, any thoughts? So we can be prepared better. It seems like it's moving along. The ball got rolling and it's rolling very fast. Yes, exactly. Um, I, we did put that two-year timeline when we applied. So um, we can slow it down if we need to once we get the approvals. Um, but hopefully we can just tie this up with a nice bow. Um, I'm hoping once we get to town meeting, it should be a pretty simple sell and people will vote on it without too much of a problem. I mean, I haven't thought too much about the strategy, but I'm thinking I'll probably, I'll hopefully be able to seek first and provide some background and um, our goals about the project. And um, CPA did suggest that we create another sign, which would be more about the indigenous history of the area. So I did not um, totally dismiss that idea, but I suggested that that would perhaps be part of round two of a future project that would build off of this one. Because we already have our designs in place and um, we already have our locations approved by planning board and the DPW director. Um, and that would add another layer of trying to find another location that was appropriate and um, more funds to design it, fabricate it, install it and all that. So we might get some questions about that. So I'm ready with that answer. Um, and at the meeting, you also said that we we touch upon that in uh, the other two pieces of um, exactly yeah. that there is more information, um, more about the history from below aspect of it in the driving tour, especially. Okay. Okay. Any more questions about our CPA application and those projects? Courtney, I see you've been working on the walking tour. How's it coming? It's coming. Um, I highlighted some things in, well, I should just upload it into, um, so I'm doing it in Word right now because it's easier to do it in Word. Mm -hmm. But once it's mostly done, um, I'll re-upload it into the drive for everybody to take a look at. I highlighted everything in red that's that's new. Okay. Um, I think it would be helpful to have a couple people read through it again. I don't know if it makes sense for some fre a fresh set of eyes. Um, and if so, who would we ask? Um, you mean uh, someone outside of us? Yeah, I was wondering if that might make sense since they haven't seen it yet. You might get Marla Miller again. I think she helped out with the 2012 edition, maybe? Um, I know it's a longer read than the driving tour, I think. Um, Alan might read it through. Mary Thayer might read it through. Those are all good suggestions, yeah. Okay, great. Great. Okay, moving on to old business. Russell School, uh, if you haven't already heard, CPA pushed off voting on Russell School Committee's application for funding to stabilize the building until an additional meeting on March 27th um, to give the committee more time to put together a more comprehensive application. And then I also know that Alex is working slowly but surely on the documentary. He's still trying to gather information as Alan alluded to. Uh, he's been looking at the historical society materials and archives to help out with that. Sounds like he needs a little bit more direction though. Um, Courtney, do you have any further updates to share? <laughs> I could talk about it all day long, um, but <laughs> uh, I've met with the select board twice um, since the uh, CPA asked to delay um, the vote to March 27th. Um, we've met with some funders. Um, 
we have looked into many options uh, for for the school, uh, the select board's uh, biggest concern seemed to be we don't have a plan and we don't have uh, all of the funding. And so we've been focusing on those two points to um, try to get them on board. Um, I feel like they're sort of coming around. Um, they are no longer concerned about filling the space. Um, it's more, again, the funding. And that's something that I'm concerned with as well. Mm -hmm. um, I told the select board that we should consider all options before demolition um, based on the results of the survey and um, based on the way that we feel about it as well. So that's where it is right now. I was getting the feeling at the CPA meeting that the majority of them were in support of providing the funding, there was just that hesitation, making sure that all of the research had been done and all the ducks were in a row. Yeah. Um, I know I shared some passionate feelings and um, Rize, Riza, I might be saying her name wrong, who represents housing, I believe. I can't think of her last name. She was very much in support. It sounded like Edwin was in support. Um, Andy, Mark, and the other Andy, Andy Kopaki, as well as Andy Morris Friedman, they wanted some more information, but it kind of sounded like they would lean in support once they had it. Um, Mary was keeping it, I think, close to the vest, what her opinions were. I think she has hesitations, um, which is which is fair. Mm -hmm. I, I fear the hesitation might be like, it's taking such a huge chunk of the money out, but I think, like if you look at historically, they haven't been giving out huge chunks of money from that those accounts. So mm -hmm. I think, like I mean, I made the plea, like if not now, when? Like yep. it, it's just the money's just sitting there. So if you're not going to spend it on this, what are you going to spend it on? Yep. Um, but I'm of course preaching to the choir now. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> So hopefully I am hoping to attend the meeting on the 27th. Um, Denise, will you be able to attend as our representative that night? Yes. Great, wonderful. Um, hopefully we, we can get some positive responses about this. It is good to hear that the select board is not being as curmudgeonly as they once were. Yes. So when you say it's not a, in terms of what will they do with the space, does that mean they've decided they would use it for town offices and the like? The, uh, there's been no decisions. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, but um, I touched upon uh, the option of moving town hall offices over there. And um, I met with Ian McKenzie, the superintendent, um, and she thinks that they could fill the space. Uh, Hopkins could fill the space. Um, they're looking to do um, a um, vocational tech um, expansion. Interesting. Um, so they could use the space there. Um, they're selling a performance space. Um, and so they could potentially put the performance space in the current building and then move like English or um, math or something uh, those sorts of classes into Russell school. And then I've just reached out to random people throughout town, like someone who owns a dance studio, like, is this something that you could potentially be interested in doing? Um, so I just wanted to collect all, all of the options, um, before, um, demolition. That's is great. On the table. That's really thinking creatively. How ironic that Hopkins got rid of all of their vocation, vocational tech pro programs Just during, the time, thinking that. Mm -hmm. during the time that I was there. Oh, they did? When was that? Oh, yeah. I, I was there for 25 years, starting in 1989. Okay. I retired in 2014. When I went in in 1989, they still had a shop. They still had domestic or home ec or whatever you want to call it. Um, and the shop had a variety of different classes that were offered um in the shop i mean yeah. the shop was still there when denise and i were there and i feel as though when we were in like seventh or eighth grade it was offered 
as a, instead of band Maybe. and chorus. Yeah, I took and it then in eighth grade. When we were in high school, they they axed it. And we it's still now have a biology. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's now a biology room, and Home Ec is, a, is an eighth grade science room. Wow. Yeah, Home Ec was there all the way through for us. Right. Home Ec's only been gone since I retired. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought it was there when I subbed back yeah. in 2016. It, it was because Teresa Menko retired with me. And when she left, um, it lasted maybe one year and then it was taken over for eighth grade science. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that the trends of like mm-hmm. your education, like in the aspect of like the, the hard just, subjects, if you will, versus like. Well, just at a time when, when vocational education is being touted um, publicly a lot. Yeah. Um, and we have gone the wrong route, I think, but that's all right. <laughs> yeah. A little off topic now, but that's okay. I yeah. pushed us in that direction. All right. Any more thoughts about Russell School anyone has to share? Okay. Moving on to new business. I submitted our annual report nice and early, way before the deadline. Um, future meetings. So as I sent around the email, they have extended doing Zoom and hybrid meetings uh, through 2025 now. I'm not sure why they don't just change the law, but maybe this <laughs> is more involved than I think. Um, but that being said, when I was reading up on open meeting laws a couple weeks ago, it did say that you can hold hybrid meetings under the current laws. It's just that the chairperson has to be present in public. So um, now that we're good for two years, we're good for me to stay chair unless anybody wants to, or is just jumping for the opportunity. <laughs> I'm willing to step down. Um, You're doing great. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to share that update. Can you and, say that again about um, uh, the chairperson needing to be in person? So as the open reading excuse me, open meeting law is now, it says you can hold a meeting and people can call into it, but the chairperson has to be present in person at the meeting. So if we held a meeting in person, but I was unable to attend as chair, then I would not be able to call in as chair. And I also think you can't hold the meeting without the chair. Um, So just something to have in our minds, although it doesn't apply for another good two years. So we'll probably forget about it in two years if we're all still here on this lovely commission. Um, but I'm hoping that they will rewrite the law, saying hybrid meetings are now here to stay. Uh, as I heard from Jennifer James, she said that they've been getting a lot more public interaction and um, the public is a lot more engaged than they ever were before by being able to attend on zoom and i mean it's also uh great for accessibility like not everybody is is Mm -hmm. able to attend meetings in person Mm -hmm. for a number of reasons so um hopefully the tide will officially turn and they will codify it into new open meeting law great well, that's everything I had in our agenda. Did anybody else have anything they needed to bring forth? No. Okay. Well, um, please put that April 5th date on your calendar if you're able to attend the select board meeting. Um, I think there's strength in numbers. Hopefully that will go well versus our other select board meeting appearances. Um, and then please come to the meeting on April 18th and be ready to talk about mm-hmm. our strategy for town meeting. Um, Mary did share a excuse me, draft of the warrant, but I did not pay attention to what article we were, so I'm not sure where we land in terms of order of business. I think CPA is usually middle to the end. So, yes. Hopefully we won't be there until like 11 o'clock at night as has happened. 
Those few meetings haven't gone that way. They've been a lot more. A lot they've done that thing now in the beginning where they lump a bunch of things together, which yeah. I think has gone well. I imagine, if, I imagine if Russell School is on the warrant, it's going to be a long meeting. <laughs> and the thing is, they'll probably put it at the end to force people to stay. And then it gets to be a really good time because people are, are tired <laughs> and fired up. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Well, I, I hope that the CPA meeting goes well on Monday. Um, I really hope we can get that before the whole town vote on it. Yes. Make some decisions. Is and that a Zoom? Is that a Zoom meeting? Yes. yes. I don't know if the agenda has been posted yet. Okay. I, I haven't seen it yet. Paid attention. Um Okay, anything else we need to talk about? Okay, well, thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you for a quick, efficient meeting.